Okay. So, nice to see so many people here. Yeah, there are seats there. For those who want. Well, uh, but it's also good to be standing. It's easier to leave the room if, if I disappoint. <laughs> I uh, don't think I've ever had the opportunity to uh, disappoint so many people at once. <laughs> I was thinking beforehand that... You know, there's in American sitcoms, they always say, well, picture of the people naked. Well, I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the title, uh, title of my presentation is Nice People, Nasty Players, which somehow became bad, uh, nice people, bad players in the program, which is... <laughs> Which kind of <coughs> is al almost the point that they that nice people would make inferior players within the game, which, which is not not what I was saying. We'll get to that. Uh, my name is Oleg Nestis Olerson. Can you all repeat that for me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. You, you could probably manage only. <laughs> well, I'm a folklorist. And uh, there, there's a story <coughs> behind why a folklorist is studying a computer game. I was going to write my master's dissertation about oral tradition in the Gospels of the New Testament. But... <laughs> So, uh, that will be my next presentation tomorrow. <laughs> so the downstairs toilet. I'll be install one. Well, uh, I have to start by talking about something you all despise. <laughs> and... When I was you know, all, all set to do my research into oral tradition in the New Testament, I, so somebody posted a link to a video. And the story behind the video was that a World of Warcraft player had died in real life. And all his friends had set up, uh, her friends actually, had set up a memorial within the game, and everybody came there, nobody from both si sides, nobody was fighting, everybody was you know, getting along. And then there was this group called Serenity Now, which attacked the mourners, <laughs> and then posted a video online of that attack with raging Scatman John behind. <laughs> And then I went to the forums for a while because I was intrigued by this and just going through the discussions. And the thing was that not everybody thought that this was a despicable act. And some of them had quite good points, actually. But after this, uh, this after seeing this, I tr uh, began to wonder how one defines what is right and wrong within these kinds of games. So, uh, I did a re research on ethnography, which we, which we sometimes call this sort of thing. I did interviews uh, with the players and some gameplay. I didn't get heavily involved with the gameplay because it, maybe it works in other games, but if you go into EVE Online and go talk to someone and say, Hi, I'm a folklorist, I'm doing research, and then the first thing they think is, Who are you spying for? <laughs> so, so uh, but... The paranoia uh, thing was a part of it, and also, 
you know, if I wasn't going to present myself, I'm a photographer doing an ethnography, then I was, I thought I was doing, uh, going into an eth ethical grey area, because I don't want to, uh, don't want to be de doing research on people that don't know that I'm researching them. But I did uh, kind of participant observation in FanFest 2007. And then I uh, just came up to people, and at least there they didn't seem to be overly paranoid. I just said, Poker, can I hang around with you? And one person that I had been hanging around with for a little while, when I came, I think it was the second day, I came and sat with him and his girlfriend. and. He said, well, I don't want to, you hanging around anymore. I think you're awfully suspicious. <laughs> with, 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 I, I'm almost ashamed to say I was <laughs> hurt. <laughs> no, because, uh, oh, poor me. Because <laughs> uh, a nice bunch of people. And then you just go. <laughs> I don't want you around. Uh, the thing that helped me with the research w was that although I wasn't an Eve player, I used to be a pen and paper role player. So the phrase, so when uh, when I was talking to people, and the fr phrases weren't, you know, overly uh, alien to me, and also it's kind of same. <laughs> We're hit. And uh, so that kind of helped me along. Uh, my the subtitle of my which was published in Icelandic, so it would be a fun little souvenir for <laughs> 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 for, for 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 you guys. Uh, I, I I know that the front row is not Icelandic because Icelanders don't sit in the front row; <laughs> they try to sit in the back. Is there, and where is the first Icelander, if any? Okay, second row, well. But they were also late, which is another characteristic <laughs> of, <laughs> of the Icelanders. Uh, yeah, the subtitle of my dissertation was Games, Creativity and Communities, which was when I was talking to people about it, uh, folklore in Iceland is a social science, so, I'm, so my kind of neighborhood is people who are doing problem science. And they thought, oh, you're doing something about E online. You're probably doing some problem science thing with it. You're trying to figure out what the problem is with E online, and that was, of course, not my intention. I just wanted to see what was going, going on. And as I said, these were the kind of three themes that pervade, pervade my uh, dissertation. <coughs> um, yeah, also, this happened when t when people from the press talked to me. They always wanted to know: Did you? These are all people are all addicted to the game, aren't they? And when I was trying to give a balance, you well, there may be some people who, t who play too much, but also they <coughs> never wanted to hear the also, and they were always kind of disappointed that I wasn't wasn't more negative. And the thing is that my research was mostly done in 2007, so the world I my ethnography is about doesn't exist anymore. Eve has <laughs> come a long way since then. Do you agree or disagree? So there I fell into what uh, folklorists tend to talk to the old people before they die. That's the kind of motto. You have to get the knowledge from the old people before they die. But I accidentally went to, to a society that was coming to an end over and over again. <coughs> And also, folklorists tend not to speak, uh, historically, folklorists didn't speak to those they were researching. Um, except I have an uh, example of a folktale collector who, after first going around Iceland, collecting tales and then publishing them, and then returning and the farmers setting their dogs on him because they didn't like what he s uh, did with their tales. So hopefully you will be kinder.
yeah, you, luckily, and I don't have an account. Uh, <laughs> or at least you don't know about it. Uh, here's a, just a quote that I like. Designers and the user community are in an endless tug of war about what the rules actually are. Do you agree or disagree? <laughs> well, first off, um, the law of the game, I would say, is the user agreement, which you all read. Before entering the game, I, it's about uh, twice the length of the Icelandic constitution. <laughs> and nobody reads that either. <laughs> well, uh, the point of the user agreement in many ways is to protect CCP from uh, overly litigious Americans. <laughs> <laughs> well, But the thing is, it also protects the game world from outside influence because it says that what is within the game has no value outside the game and it shouldn't be you know, governed by the laws outside the game. Which brings me to uh, Guiding Hand Social Club. Tho those of you who have been playing for a while have probably heard of Guiding Hand Social Club. It was Probably not the, it's no way the biggest r r uh, theft there has been, but it was the most famous in its time. And this is from the forums and kind of gives the reaction when I, I think he, he was kind of on, a, I think it's a kind of marker in the history of Eve because after this, uh, some people joined who, just because they heard of this theft. So, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, both, both with the false friendship and and, uh, and CCP, you know, just as long as they're getting their money. You probably heard this again and again afterwards. And the reaction from Guiding Hand Social Club, if you want to debate... <laughs> Our moral integrity, you can go and have a long talk with a stone wall. <clears throat> and then the realist. How many times I've said that I don't trust anyone whose home address I don't know. Well done. So as I said, some people, I, I think, quit the game because of this. Because it, uh, it was a notorious incident or infamous. But I think many more joined because they heard of it. And there were articles about it in weird publications such as Der Spiegel, which I don't think is known for their computer game coverage. Um, here is a, uh, this, on the other hand, is from one of the interviews I did. So it's just a simple, if a neutral has to pay ransom for, a ransom for keeping his life and he does pay, then we don't kill him. I've accidentally killed a guy who paid the ransom while I was shooting him, so I refunded his money because I didn't hold up to my part of the deal. You don't cheat. You're honest if you're a little crazy. And this, I think, sounds a lot more crazy if you don't know the game. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, the question mark after the title, Ethical Killer, I think this is more what they think of as customer service. A lot of these people wanted to, they refer to themselves as kind of like the Roman Empire or something, but I kind of got the feeling they were more like the Mafia. <laughs> so. And here's a quick little also from somebody who had this funny way of giving money to the newbies, especially, ex uh, he was an Icelander, as most of my interviews were, and he wanted to, more Icelanders to play, so the, these are usually, he, this is his way of encouraging them. And also for the Americans, I did the little stars sign, so 
they wouldn't get offended. <laughs> Here's another view <coughs> about my character. He's just an extension of me. I myself had tried this pirate thing, shooting other players in low section, but I killed this guy who was rather new and I ended up paying him for the ship because I got such a guilty conscience. <laughs> So, anybody laughing because it happened to them, or just... <laughs> and maybe a little polar opposite is the role player. Oh, he's mocking the people who say, Oh, you insulted my character, you insulted me, but with role playing I enjoy acting out the character. And then I log out and I'm not him anymore. So. He doesn't take offense when they're they're insulting him. And they, I think mo most people are kind of in between this. Role players, of course, kind of playing their own game in many ways. Different game than most other people. And this causes conflict in some uh, scenarios. You probably... they. They take uh, they take it seriously and not, as I'm trying to say. Um, no, also, this this is the uh, ethical dilemma of the pirates. They they never scammed. All right to kill someone, but to steal everything with trickery that wasn't allowed. And of course, this is another thing that anybody outside of the Eve world would think was kind of strange. And. And there's the pragmatism. You can trust everybody in Iceland. They are with walking distance. We are building a Titan, the biggest ship in the game, and everybody who has access to it are Icelandic. And we know where they live. Because if... <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what started out as uh, xenophobia or racism <laughs> ended up being, you know, just pragmatism. But I, I, I rather thought that he wasn't really going to beat them out. It was more a case of being able to shun, shun these people uh, or ostracize them from the community. Sorry, a little cold. And then there's the self-imposed rules, which are when there are no rules within the game and you can do whatever you want, you still have to do something. And this is a guy stole some si ships, not much really, but we got our revenge. We talked to every corp he tries to join and just give them the lay of the land. So it's either kicked or the corp goes to war with us. You, you know people like this? <laughs> so it's a kind of, uh, it's a quite an incentive, uh, incentive to be true to the corporation, or at least don't give them the, uh, your your main account name. Uh, for uh, I'm going in a different way here, talking about explo uh, exploits. Just to this is leading to somewhere. There was this bug in the module that crashes the Eve, so you blue cr uh, blue screen. So people started using when they were in trouble, they used it. So every player in the area blue screened. A few people have been banned for using these kinds of tricks. It's rather nasty. Which this I uh, ran into this when I was just reminding myself what the game was about. On uh, this is on the A Online webpage, either a scam or an exploit, and the distinction between the two is important. Hopefully, this guide will help you determine whether or not you have been the victim of a legal in-game cheat or an illegal exploit. So, what people. Again, who don't know the game would think, no, don't really see the difference between using an exploit or just scamming people out of their money. But the point is that uh, <coughs> exploits don't confirm with the reality of the game. Because we are trying to behave as if the game is real, to a certain sense, just like we're, when we're in a theater, we try to accept the reality, you know, that the 
actor on stage is Hamlet, even though we know he isn't. I, when people talk about uh, computer, uh, computer game players not knowing the difference between reality and <laughs> games there, I think <laughs> I haven't met anyone like that at least, but it's acting as if the game is real to a certain extent. The role players, of course, doing it to the extreme. And then, of course, it's insufferable to have a spy, but it's part of the game. That's the thing. The spy is just part of the game. And here we go to the farming. And have you ever done this? Just going after isk farmers and killing them? And it's kind of pointless because they come right back and they don't really, you know, they think it's annoying, but they don't really care in the... Well, actually, they, I, I've heard, oh, why are they... On the other hand, the, the buying. I don't really get upset about buying things, you know, buying ships, buying things. I understand people want success with these methods. I mean, it's like football. And here I'm not talking to the Americans. When someone has the best shoes, similar to that. Do you uh, agree or disagree? But there is a difference between buying stuff and being an outright farmer and uh, getting real money for in-game things. And uh, if we weren't being recorded and I didn't have to worry about copyright, then I would have shown you a, a funny scene, a scene from the Big Bang Theory, where Sheldon gets the sword of Azeroth or something and then sells it on eBay, and then Howard buys it. And he, here is the... Uh, he said uh, he tried paying for an upgrade, actually, in World of Warcraft. Of course, this doesn't happen in EVE. And they promised to level up and delivered. But the same person said, but the way I feel about Isk Farmers is that it should be dealt with. So these were kind of different standards there from them, at least. And here's a guy who actually spent some time with a farmer and from the Ukraine. And was, uh, paid his tuition just doing grind stuff to sell. And he was, you know, didn't do anything about him. He didn't try to kill him or anything, but he was still against the whole idea, even though he had compassion for the guys a lot. Yet another point which I was going to do. Something awful happened to Eve a couple of years ago. <laughs> Any goons in the audience? So you won't like what I'm saying. <laughs> no, just um, the thing is, <laughs> they were at least first they were really annoyed people because I don't know the real number. This is just an estimate that somebody uh, I talked to came with two thousand five hundred people out of the blue and got powerful just for sheer numbers and not for strategy. But the thing that annoyed people, I think, more than all was just their blatant risk, uh, disregard for everything that EVE kind of stood for, that they regarded EVE player as, uh, players, players as elitist. And there was a story actually told in FanFest four years ago. They elected a box of melting snowballs as a leader <laughs> and then also sent uh, somebody who had been annoying them w went to, to the hospital, uh, a box of bee-themed toys, and, w and were rather upset that he didn't thank them. So, but what, as I said, uh, the thing is that they annoyed people by not, by not, <coughs> not complying with the, the social norms and 
a little story for the end. So there was this guy who was also an Icelander and he stole a lot from us. One of us called his house and talked to his parents who made him give everything back. I thought it was hilarious. It's a computer game and parents don't understand these things. So what I thought interesting about this instance that even though he got his money back and everything was better, he says, they don't understand. Because, of course, this is not something <laughs> which complies with the reality of the game. You don't, you can't <laughs> call the parents every time somebody. It's like a parent getting upset that th their chess player's son is killing all those pawns. So, uh, to end with, I'm going to throw in a little phrase, which is, uh, I just want you to think about. Uh, it's called uh, the magic circle. And he say, it's this, a guy called Johan Husinga, who, who wrote his stuff long before computer games. Well, uh, mo I think in 1938, all play moves and has its being within a playground mark marked off beforehand either materially or ideally, deliberately, or as a matter of course, just as there is <coughs> not formal difference between play and ritual, so the consecrated spot cannot be formally distinguished from the playground, the arena, the card table, the magic circle, the temple, the stage, the screen, the tennis court, the court of justice, etc. All or in form and function, playgrounds, Forbidden spots, isolated heads, rounds, hallowed within the ordinary world, dedicated to the performance of an act apart. So, this has been a point of contention between computer game scholars. Does this still apply within computer games? And one, the, actually the same one that I quoted in the beginning of the lecture, Edward Castronova, he said, that yes, this was a helpful thing, but it's not a real magic circle. Which, I, which is like saying, no, it's not a real magic trick. He didn't really saw the woman in half. It's just a <coughs> metaphor for what you do when you enter a game. So what I've been trying to do here is point out the difference between things that, how uh, some points morality within the game are defined by how you view the uh, the relations between reality and the game. And the thing about ISK farmers, they... they <laughs> <laughs> gathering my thoughts from this nasty little comment. But this <laughs> no, they, they don't take the game seriously in any way. People who cheat at the game, they you know, kind of take it seriously because otherwise they wouldn't cheat. If they're trying to get better or something, they, they're at least showing that they care. Isk farmers don't care a bit about what they're doing, so they rob the game of its character and make it worthless, as he said. So as I was going to say, the worst crime is not taking the game seriously. Cheaters do what they can to win. Isk farmers don't care about the game. Spoil sports, rob the game of its character and make it worthless. Sorry, my <laughs> illness is getting better. So that was all I had, but I was going to do a Q&A thing. Put this up, up again. No, no. So do, going to do a Q&A. Is there anybody from... CCP to handle the mic, or anybody, anybody that I know who I can deputize. Thing is, I you can. Thank you. And I'm, a, according to this, I'm a very important person, which I don't think I've ever been in my life before. But I'm still like all you little people. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> at least the last time I was here, I was trying to be, uh, trying to be like everybody else, trying to fit in. Now I don't have to pretend I'm like you anymore. 
So uh, if there are any questions, and I'm uh, gladly answer anything you want. I, uh, about it's probably best to walk up here and just form a line instead of grab trying to the cram mic in. if you have anything. So I'll be reading passages in Icelandic now. <laughs> the thing is, this lecture was. I was asked to do this lecture, and the thing is that I was going to do it to a bunch of folklorists. And the th if you're doing a lecture for a bunch of folklorists, you tend to spend 10 minutes explaining what the hell Eve is about. And I didn't spend 10 minutes explaining to you what the hell a folklorist is. Hello. Hello. Weren't you supposed to interview me? I think you sent me mails or something. I'm the CEO of Guiding Hand. <laughs> You, you, you do have a chapter to yourself here. Oh, nice. <laughs> if, if you want to be, want everything you said to me to be known. I, I didn't say anything to you. Oh. I, I mean, I replied to your mail and you never you know, got back to me. Oh. As I recall. But I might be confused. <laughs> I think I did interview you. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, you kind of. You talk to Istvan. No. no. Okay. Well, that's confusing. Yeah, we could talk a little bit about that afterwards. <laughs> I think you were playing quite a lot at that point in time. Could be. I met your mother and everything. You met my mother? Weren't you a friend of my brother's, actually? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we could. Anyway, I don't really have. We could reminisce all that. day. <laughs> Met your brother in Ireland when I was there. Hi. Um, uh, for those Icelanders that are here and have been following the news lately, and uh, for you as well, there was recently a news article pu published here about a woman that did a um, paper on sexual harassment of women within Eve, within yep. the Eve community, and. I was wondering if, in your research, you came across anything of a similar nature. Yeah, I did. It's, uh, the thing is, of course, uh, what separates Eve from quite a lot of games is it, that they have a few women players. At least when I was there, there were very few. Might might have been might have gone up a bit now, but. There were, I talked about a little sexual harassment within, but you no, know, I said uh, I, I really wanted to read her, her dissertation, this woman's, but unfortunately it wasn't. Uh, it's locked until 2012, so I can't really comment on what she saw exactly, but. Um, the the girls or women that I talked to mostly they could get away with not saying who they were by refusing of course to use the voice thing I don't know if you can really if the voice thing has taken off uh, much more today than it was but they could mostly they just but the thing, uh, thing that I got the stories about sexual harassment within the game was often by male players uh, playing ma uh, female characters. <laughs> and yeah, it was <laughs> so. The mo most of the girls I talked to didn't play female characters. They did male male characters mostly. Because, but the thing is, um, uh, this has been a discussion in Iceland, and the thing is, it's like, oh, there's bullying on Facebook. Well, there's bullying in real life. Facebook is not the problem. Bullying is the problem. If you're, it's a kind of technophobia to uh, take this. Oh, Facebook, that's the problem. Uh, it's the same thing with Eve Online. There is sexual harassment in real life, and of course, when people can get away with things without being seen. They often, often use that to reveal, uh, uh, to do things they wouldn't usually do. But 
Of course, the problem, it, uh, the thing is, it's just a symptom of the problem. E online is, <laughs> is, is itself. It's kind of ridiculous to think that E online is the problem. The th problem is deep rooted within our society. Which we have to talk about these things on a whole completely different level than just saying, oh, E online, there are nasty players who are harassed, who, who are, uh, sorry, ill who are harassing female players. So, but I, I was hoping that I could read her dissertation. But I said, technophobia. Like so you said in the Serenity Now case, did you check anything about the, uh, the, the Eve players that have died? Because yeah, we, ha we have yeah. like yeah. stations named ships and everything about the players yeah, People I did. That have died, that have yeah, been with I talked to guys from Vito about Dark Elf, Paul, um, and there was the. They of course did a lot of things um, to remember him by, and also other people. And the thing is, there was this station that was renamed um, the DE Memorial Station, or something like this. And then an enemy captured it, and and people were uh, were furious when they changed the name of the station. And then the thing is that the Vito players, at least the one that, uh, ones that I saw comments from, said, "Well, okay, you you're we, you don't have to respect this. This is in game. We know this is in game. So if we want to change the name back, we'll just capture it again." So. Respecting the reality of the game, up to a point. Uh, but I did a whole thing about uh, dark health. But I know there have been, I've, especially since then, people were kind of trying. Uh, the Vito people were very, very good at trying to keep his uh, name alive. And one of the ways they did that was by talking to me and getting him into the book, which I'm selling afterwards. Hey. <coughs> hey. I, I was... Uh, I wanted to compare uh, the banking world to Eve. The what? To to the, the banking world. Banking world, yeah, yeah. I, did, I did that. Okay. <laughs> I, you uh, know, of course, we all remember the advance, the credit, credit crush and all that. Yeah, we in Seems Iceland. Seems like they live in virtual reality. Yeah. I, Just like the E players live in virtual reality. The point Would you agree with that a statement? Yeah, my, my, my recommendation was giving them all even online accounts. They, they would probably annoy people, but they wouldn't, you know, <laughs> crash our economy like the Icelandic bankers did, the Vikings, which we used to refer to them. But yeah, I, I completely agree that it was a fantasy world where, where numbers on the screen didn't uh, didn't mean anything. But the thing is, they didn't they didn't understand that it, this was a fantasy world. That's uh, that's the real. Uh, <laughs> Real danger with people not knowing what is uh, just a computer game and not and reality. Anybody else? Then I'll pose a question myself. Yeah. Um, you were talking about the um, uh, the rules of the circle, the the, the magic circle. Yeah. Um, and well, very briefly, I didn't yes. want to. <laughs> of course. Um, do you think there's ever a way where all users, all players within that circle? can recognize and have a, uh, the same understanding of those rules instead of having different interpretations? Well, th this is where I could go into uh, scholarly Marxism, which is, the thing is, we have a thesis, we have an a antithesis, and then we may get a synthesis, but I don't think so. People have their views and they're always... The thing is, when uh, Goonsform appeared, they were really annoying, but I think they kind of, you know, they met kind of each other because you don't 
don't survive for long if so people do make compromises in both ways i think but because they enjoy the game they make these compromises they agree within certain things that well but it's always in the flux people but i don't think there'll ever, ever be an agreement I don't, even if there are two people playing cards there will always be disagreement on the rules let alone if there how many people are playing eve now they say 360,000 subscriptions but the people i talked to had <laughs> some of them had quite a bit more yeah <laughs> who can top that nobody willing yeah so yeah hi uh what do you think causes uh people in real life who are rather um, nice in character to sometimes in game lose their moral values. I mean, what what do you think causes that? Is it? Do you think it's just the anonymity of the internet or something else? Well, it's both. Um, of course, I I think when people are doing it within, you know, the con confines of what is acceptable within, with in one line, which is uh, people. Uh, up to a point know that spying and scamming is part of the game i think that is you know just kind of a release for people you know kind of cathartic effect that you can get by getting rid of you know you, you can't tell your boss that he's something nasty that americans wouldn't approve approve of and but you can get a release from the game and i think game playing not just computer game playing, a lot of it is release, tension release, anything. The thing I remember now I, it was because they mentioned the sexual harassment. There was this group, uh, one, one story that I had from a group that had, they had, <coughs> had a, a player who went over the line, not uh, just dirty talking, really nasty, perverted things, and they just shunned him. They just, nobody within the group talked to him anymore. And so that was people, uh, you could get away with this, you know, just chatting with one person. But I think the morality of the players uh, do form, you know, some kind of boundaries, which you can't, you can't cross without being, you know, shunned or whatever. I think that's it. Okay. Well, if if there's anything, I'm selling the book for two thousand kroner for Icelanders. Well. <laughs>